There we go. I just put a recording on. There we go. Right. I'm just saying hello to everybody. Ah, oh, here's Alice. Sorry. Here we go. We've got a few people on. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, potential uh, pitches to run through. So we'll fire off soon and get it underway. Um, Anthony, do you want to just introduce yourself to um, the people on here who, might, who probably might, or some of whom might not know you? I know you can see and see it. <laughs> All right. So, hey, everyone. I'm Anthony. I'm founder and CEO at uh, Seed Legals. I see many, many pitches. I see many, many pitch decks. So uh, I'll spend two minutes and give you a very quick uh, heads up for the things to do. And if you've got time between now and doing your pitch, things to keep in mind. So really the key thing on a pitch is, you know, when you're pitching for three minutes or five minutes to an investor, they're not going to take out their checkbook uh, and invest just on that pitch. That's the hook to get into the door to have a longer discussion to do the business plan. So what you want to do is you want to tell them a story with some drama to get them involved. And if it feels like you're just reading a teleprompter, then they're out. And if they get the passion for what you're doing and you hook them, then that's what you want. So the hook, the story is going to proceed as follows, which is going to really be the slides on your deck, which is number one, you know, first page, what is the vision? What's the problem you're solving? Then perhaps more detail on the problem. Then how do you do it? Then what's your competition? What's your market size? Uh, what's the team? And lastly, how much are you looking for and contact us? And it's really important that the story arc, like a Hollywood drama, unfold as you're talking and end with raising 200K, SEI, offering SEI, SEIS, contact Bob. Because if you don't say what you're looking for, then people go, very nice story. Why am I watching this drama? And then one more thing, which is, of course, soon we'll be back to presenting in, uh, you know, uh, investors' uh, offices. But for now, it's on Zoom. So it's often the little things that are important. So good lighting, good camera setup, you know, maybe a headset, uh, no kids or dogs in the background, uh, good quality voice. But also, as you turn on your screen share, the last thing you want is the first two minutes of your five minute presentation going to work out how to make your PowerPoint full, full screen. So what you do is beforehand set up your PowerPoint and then put it into read mode, which makes the, the slide sorter and the menu bar disappear. Be careful about going full screen mode because if you've got two monitors, it'll put on the other monitor and people are looking at your outlook or something like that. So read mode get that set up beforehand. And then as you flip to it, you will uh, see the presentation immediately, beautifully full screen on everyone's screens and people know you know how to use technology. So that's the uh, intro from me and let's see how we go on our calls and pitches today. Good luck everyone. And uh, I'll be taking notes and giving you some feedback. Great, Anthony, thanks very much. Um... Where should we start? We're, again, it, it, we're relaxed here. I'm going to go along my top screen if, uh, for now. Uh, so let's uh, start with Michael. Michael, would you like to um, sh share your screen? You should be able to, or if you don't want to, that doesn't matter. You don't need to. You can just uh, have a chat. Um, and there we go. We're all good. And if you want to introduce yourself and, and, and carry on and good luck. Okay. You're on mute. Hey, Michael, you're uh, muted. Oh, yeah. Sorry oh, about that. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Away so, you go. It's all right. Okay. So, yeah. Sorry. That's not a great start. Um, okay. So, hi, I'm Michael Anthony. I'm one of the three founders from LC Pizza Co. Limited. And firstly, thank you very much for letting us. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Thank you very much for letting us present today. The genesis of our company actually started 12 years ago when I was working with Domino's Pizzas. And it actually finished uh, about 11 and a half years ago, about six months ago, when myself and my two co-founders were actually speaking with one of the biggest uh, food companies globally. And we actually agreed that pink fluffy teddy bears and Domino's Pizzas were pretty much one and the same. 
And this is actually a lot more important than people think. So let's go back 12 years ago. I was working with Domino's Pizzas on more specifically DPSK Limited, uh, which was a Domino's Pizza franchisee, and was doing some SWOT analysis and looking at some of the threats. And one of the threats was the third largest pizza company in America, which is Little Caesars, coming to the UK. And we sort of look through, and because Little Caesars are fantastic value for money, even now in America, you can get a large pepperoni pizza for five dollars. Um, we was concerned, but because of the cost of delivery being so cheap, we didn't expect this non-delivery pizza company to come across. In the middle of this story, DPSK Limited, I was working for, became the most successful Domino's franchisee uh, with nowadays 120 million pounds worth of turnover and 100 million pounds worth of net assets. I qualified as a chartered accountant in 2009 and became head of finance of a 450 employee, uh, 10 million turnover, 12 site hospitality group. And that's where I met my two co-founders, each of which with 20 plus years experience. Uh, and one of them, one in ops, one in marketing, the one in marketing uh, learned with Papa John's because he worked with them for a little while. But the most important point between these two periods is that the actual delivery driver cost and availability has changed tremendously. So back in 2009, you'll pay eight pounds, um, sorry, four pounds 83 for delivery driver with 15p per mile. And there was plenty of them because there wasn't that many delivery jobs. Nowadays, even if you pay someone 10 pounds um, per hour plus one pound delivery, you're really struggling to get them because they can go work for Deliveroo, they can work for Ocado, Amazon. Uh, there's plenty, plenty of delivery jobs out there. Plus the number of delivery drivers has lessened a little bit because the cost of delivery's just gone up and up and up with learning. So that's a huge bit. Now, Uber, Just Eat and Deliveroo come onto the market has also slightly hurt uh, Domino's and the like. Whereas with us, it's a huge advantage because we never delivered before with Little Caesars. So it makes a huge new revenue stream to Little Caesars. So coming on to the here and now, uh, and the reason why I talk about pink fluffy teddy bears is part of our hospitality group. We actually import them from China. So we get them designed in China, we get them made in China, and we get them shipped 10,000 kilometers to the UK. And then with a lorry uh, from Felix Port to our warehouse, it actually costs us per unit £3.50 delivered into our warehouse for these teddy bears. It then, by DPD, costs us seven pounds to get these teddy bears shipped two miles down the road so it's twice as much to get shipped two miles down the road than halfway across the world and made now we all heard that little caesars were coming to the uk so me and my two co-founders we spoke to them i was saying about this problem and the fact that with dominoes they were making pizzas for one pound fifty and it was costing them three pounds to four pounds fifty for them to actually get made hence why we believe the two were one and the same so we looked into this and we signed the NDA. We spoke to Kepin Emilio that actually opened Little Caesars in Madrid. Um, we looked at the one half year's market research Little Caesars have of coming to the UK. And we we're so convinced that I'm willing to put hundred pounds and pounds of my money in the first in last out basis uh, to sign up to a 25 store, five year agreement um, with Little Caesars in the East of England. And it's not just that we're convinced, but we want to make it really, really juicy for the investors as well. So what we've done is we split the company between two. So you've got a trading company here and a property investment company here. We're giving our investors 30% of the trading company and 100% of the property investment company. So this really is quite a bit of a property deal as well. So with the property deal, you can go down to your local high streets and there's lots of empty units, which you can pick up for, let's say 200,000 pounds a piece we're willing to give a lease of 20 years, because that's how long a franchise agreement is, um, in there at 20,000 pounds per year. So for these properties that you're buying for 200,000 pounds, we're putting 400,000 pounds worth of rental income, and you get that as 100%. We're looking for 1.2 million pounds invested in our company, and we'd really like to speak to anyone that's interested. Oh, sorry, that was the end of the pitch. All right, Sorry, Michael. My mic, my mic back on. Sorry, Anthony, please carry. Um, All right, Michael. So that was uh, definitely a non-traditional uh, pitch. So, um, so, so uh, I'm guessing it's sort of uh, 
early days on startup pitching on your side. So, by the way, the pitch was nicely presented. But uh, in terms of the drama that we spoke about, Mm -hmm. I think there were quite a few things to to go through. So I think the first thing is that opening page. You decided a pitch on a page. So the page is really, really busy. Um, And the problem is people... You, you don't know where to focus. Are you listening to you? Or are you looking at the slide? And what you could do is uh, take that one pager, spread it out over 10 pages, have beautiful pictures of pizza or teddy bears or whatever. So really taking it from the top, I think the key issue is I'm still not quite clear what you're doing. You'd mentioned pizza, you mentioned property, you mentioned teddy bears, you dived into delivery costs. And so I think to me, in your mind, you've got a perfect vision of what you're looking to achieve, but I don't think you managed to get that over to me or I'm guessing other people in the call. Where I, I know you want 1.2 million for something, but I don't quite know what that is. So my, my uh, take is I think before you're ready to go and talk to investors, you might want to also road test sort on a few people that you know. So present to somebody, friends, family, whatever. And at the end, say, tell me what I'm what, what the proposition is and and what what I'm doing. So um, and by the way, can I ask very quickly, is it a pizza franchise? Is it property? Is it teddy bears? Is it delivery? Because I didn't quite get that. I'm sorry it, for that. It's, it is a 25 store pizza franchise, but um, I must admit, not many people were interested in that, but they were really interested in the property element. Um, so it was more sort of buying 25 properties and having long leases on them that we're more interested in. So, yeah, I, I take your point. Um, okay. I, it wasn't the best picture that I've done on that, and I missed that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 that's okay. That's the whole point of this is a friendly environment to learn, and you'll see from others as well. So I think that's the other challenge, which is, you know, in your mind, if it's pizza that you want to be doing a pizza chain, that's one thing. Uh, and now you have to work to get people to invest in that. If it's a property business, that's something else. The challenge is if you combine them, then... It sounds like it's more appealing, but it may be less appealing. The people who wanted property are now, the pizza is a random thing that they do or, or don't agree with. And the pizza people go, why are we spending money on property? So, and one more thing, by the way, to note, which is both uh, property and franchising won't qualify for SEIS or EIS. So you've got, uh, you know, finding investment will, you'll rule out the people who just wanted SEIS and EIS. And then one last thing, of course, is if you are looking to get property, then there's a lot of money you need. You can't raise 150K to, as in building a mobile app. So you're looking to raise 1.2 million. And then the question is, what would be the valuation? But all of which I would suggest is I'd love to see you and pitch V2 that shows picture of either building or pepperoni um, Mm. and takes us through don't worry about the cost of delivery that will come out in your business plan slide about how your economics will work it the key thing is to hook people as to what it is so so i hope that was uh, useful but it did go full screen and you did present very nicely you even got a shirt and tie and a suit which is great and and suit and and hugely unusual on a startup pitch and, and and not uh, not necessary unless you know that that's your target audience. Right, Anthony, thanks very much for those comments. Um, we'll move on for now. We have a chat afterwards. Um, I've got Ian on my top right hand screen here. So, Ian, good afternoon, sir. Welcome back. Can you hear me? No, no I can you. now. Yeah. Right. Um, Everybody, it's Ian Champners. I'll let Ian introduce himself and what he's up to, and away we go. Um, Share screen? Yes. Yeah, please. Okay. Yes, well, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Ian Champners. I'm the founder of GoThere.Travel, GoThere Travel Limited. My background is travel and travel technology. Now, the outbound market is huge. Some 46 million Brits take a holiday. I'm talking pre-COVID. And um, the problem that our platforms can solve is one for the consumer, 
and one for the travel agency. Those are the two sectors that we think our platform can actually provide some miracle solutions for. So the first issue is for the consumer, whereas you'll see here, simple search on holiday in Australia produces not 1.6 million, but 1.6 billion results. It's just far too much information for most people. And the whole process becomes really quite stressful, very time consuming, and especially for those 19 million, according to Travel Supermarket, who haven't got a clue where they want to go when they start thinking about booking a holiday. So that's the consumer issue. And the second uh, sector that we believe our platform can provide a solution for <clears throat> is the travel agency market. Travel agencies have a perennial problem of how to find new clients at an affordable cost. And just looking here, a quick market overview, most of us probably recall that before the internet, we tended to book through travel agents. Then along came the internet, and that started the DIY revolution, particularly for what I call the fly and flop Mediterranean holidays. But now we've still got 9 million holidays out of the 25 million that are sold through atoll licensed bonded tour operators who are booking through the agency channel. And that channel comprises of four and a half thousand plus retail shops, 59,000 travel agents, and 6,000 and a growing population of home workers. So I put a little note in here about the question, do consumers still use travel agents? And the answer that John and Irene Hayes gave when they took over the 500 leases of Thomas Cook's was very much so. That's our answer. Consumers are looking for more advice, particularly for those more expensive holidays. So what's the opportunity and what's the solution that we believe our Go There Travel platform can solve? We've got consumers who are drowning in information, but I think that they're starved of knowledge. And the way that you get knowledge is to ask of, uh, advice from trusted experts. We've got 59,000 plus travel agents who are trusted experts. So the solution is put the two together over a tech platform, a tech platform that introduces, but does not fulfill, bring them together. And using that old BT adage of it's good to talk, instead of talking over the phone, let's talk over a one-to-one -one Zoom uh, video consultation. How are we going to achieve this? Well, through our gothere.travel website. Here on the website, you can search for, the consumers can search for holiday destinations or inspirational experiences, and they can ask those questions of experts who know those destinations, who know those experiences inside out, the sort of questions that um, the guidebooks and Google don't answer. So if you like what you see and read from the, uh, from, from the experts we show, uh, and the experts will have pre-recorded short videos, one, one and a half minutes on why you might want to go to Sydney, why it might be somewhere that you consider. You can actually request then a Zoom conversation for one-to-one -one personal advice and set up a one-to-one -one call. So we're using really our strap line here is all about travel experience. Use their travel experience to discover yours because these guys have got trusted knowledge, they've got knowledge, product knowledge, destination knowledge, and they will give you the advice as to who best can match your holiday expectations, your holiday wishes, and of course your budget. So what are the USPs? Well, it's what I call that one-to-one -one Zoom conversation. It's a complete differentiator and no one else is doing this. I call it partly the three Cs as a compelling proposition, convenience, choice, and comparison. Uh, and why are we choosing Zoom to do this? Because the Zoom app in the last year has become ubiquitous. And since last year, the take up and the usage of Zoom has been quite phenomenal. Before nobody knew about it, then there were 300 million people a day using it, and the app is now downloaded and people are there. So the actual technology is there. Why now? Well, in the last year, uh, 2020 was a desperate, torrid year for the, for the travel sector. The travel agents had nothing to sell and no one to sell it to. And that's pretty much continued most of this year as well. But uh, in, alongside the increase in the footfall, which was obviously massive for all retail outlets, there was curiously a potential silver lining that came out of last year. And that was it illustrated to those people who'd started booking themselves the pitfalls of a DIY holiday. And many people got a lot of publicity, had lots of problems in getting their money back and refunds. And the travel agencies earned their, um, 
earn their money by, by helping lots of people do that. To the extent that ABTA, the Trade Association, did a recent survey which showed very encouragingly 28% more of the consumers plan to book their holiday through an expert next year. And if the consumer wants that, what I call face-to-face -face, but not going into a retail shop, but they'd like the face-to-face -face rather than simply over the phone, our platform could provide an alternative for the travel agent as a walk-in, uh, as an alternative to the walk-in. So in terms of creating the value chain, uh, this schema illustrates what we're doing here, because in solving the problem for the consumer, holiday search, we're also solving the problem for the travel agent by delivering leads. And that's really where the business model is, because travel agents can spend up to a third of their commission. Commission is normally around 10%, sometimes a bit more, but on a 10,000 pound holiday, that's obviously quite considerable. And they can spend that sort of money in acquiring a new client. So that's where our model is, the revenue streams as a tech platform. I, I want to repeat that this is a digital media tech platform. It is not a booking site. We will not take any bookings. There is no fiduciary uh, uh, capacity there. Or This is purely a tech platform that introduces but does not fulfill. So our revenue streams will come from the lead referrals every time a call is crystallized to set up a Zoom one-to-one. -one, and monthly recurring revenues from being on the Zoom platform. We'll also have an annual profile listing and um, directory. Where are we now? Well, we built a demo website to illustrate the proof of concept uh, and show the features and the functionality. We've written a very detailed functional spec and submitted that to a number of tech developers we've identified could do this for us. And re in recent weeks, I've made a number of approaches to my trade contacts to see whether they would be interested in becoming seed, seed founder shareholders. We're actually looking for 250K for the full seed round but 150 in seed agile or seed fast, as Anthony calls it, would be sufficient for us to build a commercially viable platform and to start the initial trade marketing. SEIS and EIS tax relief is obviously critical, and we'll apply for that just as soon as we can identify uh, people who've got some appetite to become an investor. Who's in the team? Well, um, my own background is travel, travel technology. We built reservation systems with my partners for 120 tour operators, had an annual turnover of 10 million and a profit of about one. But on this platform that I'm now building, I'm very keen to get a foundation team, which will include two key roles, the CMO and the CTO, very key roles. But I'm also very keen to get the whole trade behind this. So I've already got sitting prepared to come onto the advisory board, the current chairman of ABTA, the trade body, and the previous chairman, Noel Josephides, both of who say, this is a unique opportunity, the market needs it, and you're selling expertise, you're not selling product. That's a very key differentiator. So in summary, what's the exit uh, and why now? Well, the timing is right to build this. I believe that as a tech platform that, for, that introduces and doesn't fulfill, that our valuation will be based on revenues, not EBITDA. So we're projecting 1.9 million in the next three years in terms of revenues. And I think that could provide an interesting ROI for early investors. Thank you for your time for listening. And if you'd like further information, please contact me. Thanks very much, Ian. Um, Anthony, would you like yeah. to comment? Or all right. So, Ian, you can stop screen sharing now, by the way. So uh, that, that was uh, awesome. So for those uh, on the call who don't know Ian, Ian is a regular and has presented several times. And I love uh, to see Ian's uh, and, and slide decks evolving journey. The first time was quite diffident, a bit uh, meandering, and now it's a pretty slick presentation. So, uh, and, and I think also the first time uh, that Ian presented was right in the middle of lockdown. It's like the first presentation on when we all go traveling again, we all went, mm, that's not going to happen. But of course, now seeing my team, half of them on holiday and disappearing every time I call them, they're on a, a call from some island somewhere. Um, clearly, it's happening. So, so your timing is good. I think you've pretty much nailed it, Ian, on both the, the slick presentation and the deck. I think there was one slide which was superfluous, which was the, uh, the exit slide at the end. And I really would suggest removing that for two reasons. One, uh, you had it perfect with raising this amount, SEIS, contact Ian, and then 
it was like you know the, 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 they found the murderer but wait they found another body and uh, so uh, that that exit one it's it's way too early before first round to talk about an exit and the other thing is investors are looking for an exit in the hundreds of millions but on year 3 you're showing 1.9 million in revenue that that would be a valuation of you know 20 million or something like that so uh, investors would not typically be looking for uh, an exit at that point. They'd be looking for much later and much larger numbers to be enticing. So, so that uh, I wouldn't talk about an exit uh, before your first raise. That can come later. And if investors do want to talk about an exit, then my suggestion is always, you know, you, you're building a business to create value. And at the point, it starts making sense to discuss an exit, either there's an incoming uh, because you're, uh, you, you're strategically important or your revenue or hype or whatever it is, you'll take the call or after some years, you'll start uh, looking around. But yeah, for sure, premature to talk uh, exit before you've got something built. And I think the other, the other gap is that, um, you know, as you're discussing it, there is a little mind the gap moment when you go, we've written a functional spec and we haven't built it yet. And investors are going to, be, you know, you, you become more investable the more you've built. And if you've said, I've got a PowerPoint, okay, the next thing is I've built a prototype. I've got you, it's live. I've got users, I've got revenue. And each time you go back towards, it's just an idea in my mind, in investors' minds, it's the, there's, there's risk here. Can you build it? How long will it take? And so if you can cross over, and I'm not suggesting that you have to uh, hold in this and, and uh, fund it from your own pocket, but if you are able to have a slide deck that says, and we've built a prototype, or and we've got our first integration, or and we've got our first calls, that considerably de-risks it for an investor. But otherwise, uh, really great uh, presentation and love seeing the progress uh, week by week. And at some point soon, everyone on the call is going to go, yes, we want in. All right. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Anthony, because um, you said let's change the, the slides, which I did. Uh, and uh, you're, just for everybody else listening, if they haven't done this before, these, these, these practice pitches are just terrific. Because I used to pitch a lot when we were a big company. But going to pitch for a new startup, trying to find money when you haven't got any recurring revenues in there. It's a very different game. So all your advice, Anthony, about the story and what problems is it solving and where are you and what do you want? Absolutely fantastic advice. I'm very appreciative. Ian, thanks very much. Great to see you. We'll be in touch when you're ready to pitch. We'll, we'll have you at the top of the list. <laughs> um, and obviously now, what we're doing now, just to let you know, folks, uh, as I say, we're running this program through the Exponential Pub. We Startups join as um, members, it's 30 pounds a month. You get events like this, you get um, for free to two of these, two actual workshops again with Anthony, which covers all the ins and outs of cap tables, seed fasts, agile funding versus maybe a, an actual seed round straight away. And they're, they're explained more. And perhaps if Anthony's got a couple of minutes at the end, he can, he can cover that for you. Uh, a virtual uh, pitch is also included in the monthly fee, only one over the year but and also a physical one as well and uh, discounts and such like to our other events and member offers for startup companies like um, free consultations with foresters um, access to resources from seed legals and and direct links into them so that's what we're up to now we'll carry on alice um, now there you are um, are you there I'm, I'm um, myself, sorry. Hi, Alice. Well, just hi. a quick introduction. Uh, we, we met Alice at our first actual uh, physical networking event back um, in the city last Friday. It was an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. And I will pass you over to Alice, who will introduce herself and practice her pitch. Hello, everyone. This is my first time pitch to any person, really, uh, apart from friends and family. So bear with me. And I'm going to share my screen. I hope it works. Uh, let me share, present it. Can you see it okay? Yes. 
Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, so my name is Alice. I'm the founder of Peace and Pure. Um, and Peace and Pure, our tagline is um, beauty and wellness together. Um, so brief introduction of Peace and Pure, of who we are. Um, so Peace and Pure is a premium a beauty and wellness company that focusing on emotional being and self-love. Um, so the business, um, the idea of the brand um, concept for, first formed um, in 2019, um, but then I was only starting to work on the business um, uh, 2020. Last year is about a year. So the, part, uh, so the business already launched and then we launched our part, first product uh, in February, 2021. Um, so where the business idea and my journey is that um, I uh, went through some very challenging time in my life. Um, and then as a result of that, I was experiencing depression and grief. Um, so it was a really challenging time. I was experiencing a lot of self doubt and um, loneliness. So I had a kind of a emotional well being um, um, challenges and uh, mental wellness um, problem back then. So that's kind of during my uh, challenging time, I discovered the importance of, uh, of our mental well-being and also as a woman and all, who loves beauty and, uh, and skincare, I realized the connection between our mind and our skin. And then later on, I did a lot of research about it, about how the skin and the brain interact with each other. And also through my journey that I wanted to improve my emotional being and overall overall wellness um, that I I um, become very passionate about emotional being about people um, people's mental well-being um, and then and it, it's also that time that I realized uh, um, there wasn't a, a brand or um, um, especially for um, the area of the beauty beauty industry there was lack of a brand that um, really giving um, people that kind of love and uh, care and support, um, except just uh, caring for your uh, skin or caring for your uh, appearances. But there wasn't a link um, to be emphasized to say your uh, internal world is very much related to your outer appearances. So that's just kind of my, uh, the idea come from and, and I really feel I have this mission to have this message across. Um, so that's first how the business idea formed. Um, and then I went ahead um, with um, some funding from Virgin Startup and then started the first pro um, product and launched the first product, as I said, in February, 2021. And then it has been uh, six, seven months. It's been an amazing jour uh, journey. Uh, that have uh, been quite recognized by some uh, industry, industry leaders that uh, just share some milestone. Uh, in May 2021, we've been selected by RI Diversity Program as one of the three um, British startups in the FMCG um, industry, um, supported by their um, data and expertise in SM FMCG. And in June 2021, We've been selected um, by a judge business school, University of Cambridge, to participate in their pre-seed accelerator starting in uh, late September this month. I'm very excited about. Um, and then also in terms of sales, uh, we've been working with uh, different B2B retailers and partners. Uh, and just a highlight that we've been featured in Wellbeing Sisters, which is um, um, also, well-being focused um, company will be featured in all their subscription boxes um, because um, how their founders loved our product. Uh, and also, the product has been received all five star reviews. And recently, uh, we've been featured in Vogue September issue, um, especially on their cover of Conscious Beauty Special. That's a huge deal for us. We only found out uh, last weekend. Um, no. Uh, the day before last weekend so it was very exciting so that's our journey so far and so in terms of what we wanted to do um so uh, we could say it's an opportunity or a problem uh, i would say it's a more kind of opportunity is that um beauty and wellness services are separate so as i mentioned before i it's from my own personal struggle that i i find beauty is very much focused on outer appearances but they are not creating or linking the um, wellness um, 
approach um, inside of beauty, whereas now, uh, especially after the pandemic, um, but in general, there's a trend that consumers, they want an integrated approach. And then there's a research has been done by McKinsey that um, they ask how modern uh, consumers will wellness is actually across different six dimensions that include better health, um, better fitness, better nutrition, better appearances, of course, and then better sleep and better mindfulness. And I just briefly listed some well-known brand that is targeted at each of this function, um, different dimensions, but basically none of the well-known brands are kind of cross different dimensions to emphasize the overall well-being and beauty um, for consumers. And then that is our solution. That is what I want to do through my brand that um, the solution is Peace and Pure. That is a new brand integrate multiple dimensions of wellness that are all under the same overarching brand message. And um, our philosophy is, um, so basically the outer appearances has a direct relationship with a person's whole mental and physical wellness and for which all shall be addressed um, the same time. And our approach is um, we want to create the most trusted global brand that improve a person's um, beauty and well-being with all this kind of integrated wellness approach. And how we're going to deliver that is through our product um, services. I say three pillars that covers uh, six different wellness dimensions. So the, th um, the three pillars um, covers what we actually doing our product and services. The pillar one, that will be the, uh, the products, which is um, may include like a premium skincare and body care uh, and beauty supplements um, and then all made natural, clean, vegan, um, sustainable and safe for all. Um, so that's why I say ethical products uh, without no toxins. And then uh, the pillar two is content. So we want to create publications, blogs, um, social content, YouTube, podcasts, all um, with the arena of beauty and wellness. And then pillar three is experiences that um, uh, I want to create brand special special events. So which covers uh, areas, um, the areas we want to focus on. And also importantly, I want to um, create um, the wellness retreats because I had a travel background, which I will later on uh, address a little bit. So I want to create this amazing holidays and um, retreats that um, so our audience, our customers can come along, use all our amazing products and um, have the wellness speakers, um, have the um, uh, yoga teachers, um, personal growth uh, experts come along with our retreats, have amazing time and really experience this holistic well-being and beauty experience. And as, as I say, the three um, pillars of products and services would be covering the six different dimensions um, that will be of wellness that will be integrated into the brand. Uh, as I said, include um, beauty products, uh, nutritional products, and also include a lot of tools and method and um, expertise about uh, mental wellness, uh, movement, um, and teach people how to sleep better, about how to rest better, and also very important function, which is our connections and um, our relationships. That is what we are um, going to cover with our business. And the business model, in, I would say, is two part, two categories. One is standalone sales. Another one is subscription. Uh, in terms of standalone sales, we have uh, products, as I mentioned, all the beauty products, and body care, and nutritional products. Uh, we sell them either D2D, D2C or through to our B2B um, customers and then through um, experiences, um, tickets. So we would sell tickets for events and then of course um, travel retreats, uh, we sell them as holidays and then also content with publication, uh, essentially it's kind of a, um, in sort of a media business model in that, in that sense, but within all our uh, brand message and what we want to deliver. Another revenue um, stream for us is to package above uh, creatively to um, corporate clients because we see the rise of wellness and especially corporate employee wellness. And I think we, our, with our product and service and experience can really deliver that um, complete wellness experience for our corporate clients. Um, and another model um, we will do is about subscription. So, uh, so say 
you pay 50 pounds per month and you, uh, uh, you commit to minimum six months uh, commitment and then you can buy up to 100 pounds worth of our products and access all our premium content and you can attend one of our events for free and if you found any additional purchase, uh, purchases you can have it at 15 percent discount and so that is our business model and in terms of market size um, so this figure has come from um, the global um, wellness um, institute uh, and this uh, a figure and to be updated we would imagine the number will be a lot higher because of the influence of the pandemic and um, so basically um, after all uh, the global wellness economy is huge, it's uh, 4.5 trillion and as um, basically five times growth as a global economy. So it's fast growing, huge market. And the, one of the biggest market is um, beauty, personal care and aging, which is um, takes one trillion. Uh, and then that comes wellness, tourism, uh, physical activity, nutrition, healthy eating, and and of course, mental wellness, is, which is expanding um, uh, quickly and rapidly. And another one we want to cover is uh, the works, uh, workspace wellness. So it is a huge market. Um, and in terms of um, the SAM, uh, is, uh, the, that is, shows the, um, the areas of industry we want to cover in, which is um, highlighted, you can see in color here, um, that is about 100 billion. Um, so that's a huge market. And then uh, just show you the traction to date. As I mentioned, we've been on the market about six months. And during the six months uh, period, we have um, launched quite a few um, stock list um, retailers, uh, including some really industry well-known with um, retailers with, especially with the well-being focus that includes Ecology, Organa, Wellbeing Sisters, um, LDC, um, SC, Wolf and Badger, uh, and also we had amazing sales event um, with corporate event at um, Amara. And also we've been doing pop-up sales store. Uh, we've been invited by LDC and Psychology to attend their pop-up store in central London. Um, we've been run to uh, in Chelsea and Regent Street and also um, uh, Westfield, um, White City. And actually from today, uh, this afternoon I have to rush off. Uh, we're gonna prepare the psychology um, uh, pop-up event in uh, in Common Garden that is coincide with um, British um, Beauty Week at the same time for the next um, two weeks. And then in terms of um, social following uh, with, within the next, uh, sorry, the last few months we reached um, 4.3 followers is um, quite fast growing, organic growth. Uh, and also we have about 600 newsletters sign up. Um, and apart from the stock list I mentioned, we have quite a few agreements in process. So people are reviewing our products and uh, we're in conversation about uh, future stock, uh, which include Pure Souls, um, University Arms Hotel. And University Arms Hotel, uh, Arms hotel is a special one because it's a premium uh, hotel, which I love in Cambridge. I would imagine our product stock with them. So that they actually don't have a beauty room at the moment. Um, so they're planning to launch their spa and beauty room and they have used our product. They love the branding. They love the local independent brand. So um, they're waiting for us to develop a full range of products. So they really want to use all our full range product for their beauty room. They think it's very special. Um, so it's kind of an uh, independent um, uh, wellness experience um, come from Cambridge. Um, so yeah, that, that's our attraction so far. And as I mentioned, we've been featuring- uh, Alice, Alice, can yeah. I hop in? Because I think we're yeah. out, of, out of time. Oh, I, don't know if there, I don't know if there are many more slides. No, uh, no not many more, no. Okay, okay. okay. shoot on yeah, to sure. your next slide or your last, wherever you might be. And then yeah, which we'll, is we'll the last slide, comments. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so sorry, this is the coverage, which is what we call about okay. and right. news. Uh, competition, I have to uh, mention. Just, just ju jump to the last slide. Okay. Otherwise, right. otherwise, we're out of time. Okay, uh, all, all right, okay. 500K. Yeah. All right. 18 month runway, and then this is our plan. Um, Q2, we want to launch the full range of our skincare and body care products. That's okay. Yeah. Just just the last yeah. slide. Look, yeah, that's time. fine. So, uh, so, so, so some, yeah. some pitch events are brutal with the time, right? A clock will go, it'll okay. cut you off. So, so, so you have, you have to scope it to the available time. Yeah. All right. we'll, we'll, we'll cover, I'll, I'll just hop in there. Alice, this is great. I mean, yeah. obviously 
you're telling a story and everything else. You're telling too much of a story rather than selling selling uh, a business. Okay, now yeah. the, the, we're we're not here to knock you. Don't worry about that. We're here to help you. Of course, um, that's, this is exactly what we do. Um, yeah. Don't talk through slides that are up there necessarily. Um, there's probably a load of slides, and when, when we I'll look back at this that we can take out. Um, I think you know the important ones is like what stage you're at. Um, obviously, what you're looking for. Um, perhaps less of an introduction, if that makes sense. And I understand yeah. the, the background, but yeah. people, and it sounds blunt. Yes, they're interested in why you've set something up and the reasons behind it, but that can be explained in a sentence or two. I yeah. see. Okay. Um, yeah. What they're interested in as an investor yeah. is, you know, who have you got on board? What sort of traction you've got so far? What you're looking to raise? How you're raising it? Etc. Yeah. So yeah. sorry, Anthony. I'll, I'll know you're going to cover a few things here, but so yeah. But please don't take anything to heart. This this is, you know, the whole idea of this. And I'm sure Ian won't mind me saying, if you saw Ian's first pitch, you would have thought, oh my god. <laughs> no, no, it's not that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not that comparing you to Ian, by the way. But yeah. That's what we're here to do. Um, we have a lovely girl who's not on these anymore because she's raised, but she was a rabbit in the headlights when she first, and Antino knows who I'm talking about, yeah. um, and now is successfully raised. So I'll, I'll be quiet because we can move on. But Anthony, please. Um, just... Yeah. All right. So, so Alice, that was a fantastic uh, first pitch. So I think, you know, uh, for in, so, so let's imagine this is your first pitch. Let's say that cut to a year's time, you've successfully closed your first round, you're now raising again. What would your pitch look like at the time? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because investors can sense when you still try to work it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is you want to pretend that you've worked it all out so that they come along on your journey. Because if they sense that you've got all the pieces still, you know, trying to figure it out, they'll go, I'll come back later. So imagine yeah. what an alternative version, because you've got all the pieces here. I think you got started on the wrong foot with the, the, the timeline, because yeah. it's a bit like Pulp Fiction. We start with a body, and now you're going, is this the beginning? Is this the end? Where am I? And, and then you're sort of slowly piecing the story together. So let's see what an alternate version could have been. It could have been, let's imagine, hello, I'm Alice. I'm founder and CEO of uh, Peace and Pure. Peace and Pure is a new brand, and now you can have a lifestyle shot of because one of the things you're missing is you didn't really show the product. So you're going to show a person, an Insta person, with the, with the brand putting stuff on, whatever it is. It's a fantastic new product, um, and it fills, fulfills this gap in the market. So now you're going to talk about, you know, traditionally it's not just about the, 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 the what you put on your skin, it's going beneath the skin. Then you're going to have a bit about, here's the background as to why I thought of it. Then you're going to, you know, talk about uh, the particular features of the product. And now the next thing is what investors want is they want certainty. So if you say, yeah. I've got two products sold for this amount in these stores and I'm raising this amount, then it's clear. But as soon as you talk about, I'm thinking about doing a retreat and I'm not sure about the one off subscription or other pricing, it, it leads to uncertainty. And certainly anytime you talk about a retreat, it's a different model. Investors know that's very capex expensive, potentially. You need staff as opposed to making product, which is, you know, uh, you know products. Uh, it's finding materials, getting manufacturing, getting boxes designed, getting labels designed. So you want to really focus on one thing and then have investors come in for one thing. So what I would do is looking at the slides, as, uh, as Neil mentioned, you've just got too many to fit the available time. And also, if the story starts dragging, then you lose people's attention. And you kind of had us early on, and then you lost us somewhat. So focus the story is beautiful shots of the product, why it's different, the problem it solves. I would lose the four and a half trillion because you know people know beauty, skincare, wellness is a huge market you're not going to have a good fraction of the market. So, you know, it's not like seed legals would have to point out the legal tech market in the UK is this amount because nobody knows uh, here, 
it's giant, so you can you can ditch that. Um, then I think the other thing that that showed and goes back to the beginning of my comment is you can see as you're doing the deck, you would think about it's a journey for you as well. I'm thinking of doing this and I'm thinking of doing this. I'm not sure. But the problem is all of that uncertainty leads investors to go, dude, figure out what it is. So any hint of uncertainty, unless you really want feedback from the investor, if you're going to, you know, someone at L'Oreal and you're going, well, I'm not sure whether I should do subscription or one-off, what will you be your thoughts on it? But only have a couple of those get feedback things in the deck. Otherwise, the investor will just see that this is still a hobby for you, you're still trying to figure it out. And when you have figured it out, I'll be back. So that was uh, probably it. But the, I think the main thing for me is, if you've got a great product, have it lead with lifestyle shots of the product and then <laughs> tell the story from there. Maybe it's not obvious. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the yeah. first slide was the, 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 the timeline, but there was sort of somewhat in the background a picture of the bottle, yeah. but, but, but then you took us uh, the, the wrong way. Yeah. So, okay. so I'd, I'd love to see take two, because I think you're going to have a wonderful story. It presents brilliantly. Uh, and moving the chapters around so that the, the, they find the body at the end of the story is, uh, is, is, is going to be the way to go. So, so thank you. And also, you know, you know if, if people see the story is going to fit the five minute available slot, then people chill. But if it sees this as dragging, people start getting stressed. Are oh, you going to have to be cut off? Will you get to the end? Where is this going to end? So you want the story to, to, to be there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alice, thanks. thanks very much. Uh, as I thanks, say, Alice. We'll, we'll let you go. Um, again, short, straight, punchy, but we'll help you get there. Um, and everybody, really. It, it's, it's difficult raising capital. It's difficult pitching um, because as founders, and we say this in our workshop, founders know the story and they want to tell the story. Um, the investors don't really want to know that. They want to know what the deal is. Yeah. And... But again, it's like Dragon's Den. You go on Dragon's Den and they go, I'm a fan of doing this, I'm doing that. They've got about a 90 second pitch and then the guys will ask them questions. Go, okay, what's this, what's that? That's where you've got to really, your first 90 seconds has got to go bang. Yeah. yeah. And there's some people, and I'm not, this isn't knocking you, I'm just talking to everybody here. Um, you know, there's some companies that give you, um, you know, literally 90 seconds to pitch. I went to one, and I, without going on and dragging this thing on too far, I went to a big one in Queen Elizabeth um, Stadium, the uh, hall back in London a few years ago. I think they had two minutes to pitch. This guy got on stage and said, I'd just like to thank Anthony for his pitch. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. What he's doing to change the world in the legal professions and startups and everything else. I can't praise him enough. He was absolutely fantastic. By the time he'd finished that, he had about 30 seconds left to pitch. Yeah. <laughs> and however it is nice to praise people for force that this is a brutal business um, to the extent with when you start dealing with funds, even angel investors and such like, and the workshop is good for this as well, is you've got to have a teaser that says literally your elevator pitch, bang, this is what we're up to, this is what we're doing, we're changing the world, blah, blah, blah. Um, and within that, then you've just got to be concise designed um, to where you to where you want to go you know it's, it's a sales pitch basically uh, and again that's aimed at everybody so don't worry there. Yeah, yeah, but, no, I'd, I'd add on that as well yeah just a few people have, have come on there and, and the information's great but when these presentations are going on you have to you can see the passion in your in your presentations there but try to feel like you're explaining it to someone who doesn't understand your business that's the key thing to get across and and don't save the revenue model necessarily right to the end you, you keep you keep us going and going and going and sometimes our attention waves off before before we get to there you're showing your product and explaining the, the solution that it, yeah. that it gives to the market then just tell us what your revenue model is on the back of that i, I don't need to wait another five minutes to get to that point because i'm starting to switch off again or I'm listening to the long stories and I'm just thinking get to the point how, do, how, how will I get my money back if I give it to you where are you going to go with it and that's it might sound yeah it might sound a crazy idea but it's more or less 
nine times out of 10, take one of your lower slides down, which is the key slide and put it at the top, right? And start there, like we are with so-and-so who's done this, this, that, and the other. Um, I had a, and just give an example, a very good friend of mine in Dubai was raising money, five pages of his 33 page pitch deck he sent me. I didn't know, well, I do know, I did know what he was doing because he told me, but from the pitch deck, I had no idea. And then right down mm -hmm. the bottom, um, and he was doing something with uh, army veterans was a quote from the head of NatWest Bank's uh, startup business, um, uh, uh, head of banking that said, this is a game changer. I said, Mike, put it at the top. That's all he needs to do, right? We're yeah. changing the world. Says so-and-so, the head of startups at NatWest, whatever it was. Keep it concise. I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about those pink fluffy toys. I still don't know where they fitted in with the pizza. <laughs> yeah. I've got this, the pink fluffy toys running around my mind going along with pizza franchises. Right, we're, we're going we're gonna to move on because uh, everybody's time is valuable. Um, Salah, are you there, sir? Hi, sorry, let me... Hi, I'll let you carry on. Introduce yourself, yeah. please. And... Sure. Hi, I'm Wait. Salara Muller, and uh, I will share my screen with you right now. Can everyone see that okay? Can everyone see the screen okay? Yep, all good. Okay, yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Salara Muller, and I'm the founder and CEO of Amami. And uh, we're on a mission to change the way that we feed our children conveniently forever. Um, we aren't happy with what's on offer in the baby food aisles. And um, that led us down a path to create these um, beautiful 17 blends that are fridge fresh for up to two months and deal with all the problems that parents have with um, current baby food options now, uh, nowadays. So um, we use an innovative new processing technology that uses cold pressure and water, and uh, that keeps our food safe for babies to eat, but also retains all the nutrients, the taste and textures that you expect from homemade foods. And um, it's leveled across three different stages. So we want to help babies um, nurture on from milk feeding onto eating family foods. So we've created combinations of different textures and flavors to help expose them to a huge variety of different foods so that they learn to love foods later on in life. This is our current range of 17 blends. So a lot to choose from, a lot of interesting flavors that you won't find out on the market today. Um, and this is where what leads us to the problem with baby foods nowadays. Um, I think a lot of parents, being a, a parent myself, of a young kid and a baby on the way, um, we have many conversations. All of our lives are pretty busy um, in a city like London, especially. And we all know that pouches are a quick solution, um, you know, to, to, to give our babies food on the go. Um, we all know the problems with those pouches too. It's sort of, it's become, um, you know, a guilt-ridden um, option for many parents. And that shouldn't be the case, especially um, in the early years of a child's life, um, where 80% of the brain develops within the first three years of life. Um, you know, we want to give parents more time. We want them to have incredibly healthy options available. And we also want the best for our babies. Um, more problems that, you know, some that are known, some that are lesser known. Um, it, obviously, it's, you know, pouches today are very heavily watered down. Um, and those are disguised under the guise of using vegetable stocks and so on, and because the law allows them to do so. There's a lot of uh, a lack of transparency with nutrition in and how little of the nutrition remains in the food after extreme processing. And they are nowhere near as healthy as homemade foods as conducted um, by several studies. So we have a solution with Amami um, we're using industry first processing. Um, our foods retain nearly all of the nutrients and they're made just like you would make at home. And instead of um, being on the shelves for two years, which is usually often older than your baby that you're feeding them to, our foods stay fridge fresh for up to two months. So they give you a convenient option without any of the compromise. Our sugar levels are all, um, all remain within a six gram per hundred gram um, level uh, that's a big difference 
when you track what's on the market, some foods can go up to 21 grams per 100 grams um, of product, which is apps way too high for especially babies of six months to 11 months. Um, another huge problem that we have in the industry is a big problem with non-recyclable packaging. And, um, you know, pouches that we find on the supermarket shelves are some of the biggest culprits in, in non-recyclable packaging weights. So we've now, all of our products are in 100% recyclable packaging, um, including the shipping boxes and everything um, that goes, go, goes with it. We've created all of our pots with some expert nutritionists, weaning experts. We've taken into consideration many different things, not just the food and exposure to different foods, but how it can help kids develop better motor skills that pouches unfortunately do not help with as they suck directly from the spout. So we've made it open. We want children to have a relationship with the food so they can see them and, uh, and be spoon fed um, just like we are and <laughs> able to see the food. So why a mommy and why now? I mean, if, if you know, you can see from the image here, a lot of shelf stable pouches are um, very heavily processed. They don't really resemble foods that we make our kids at home. So it doesn't um, allow children to have a taste for different ingredients that they would learn to accept later in life. We have big problems with obesity and other health uh, related issues. And um, currently um, the NHS and the early years nutrition groups are calling for um, better options for food for our children. So we've moved away from heavily processed and heat treated foods to freshly blended and uh, nutrient conserved foods through our high pressure processing, uh, a new processing method in the UK. And um, there are statistics that show that this is the right time um, for a food like ours. I mean, of 74% of parents that um, were interviewed through, the Min through Minta for the baby foods and drinks report in 2020, and they said they would like to see more fresh and refrigerated baby foods available. And there's a lot of other interesting facts that I will leave you to go through in your own time. But um, our current revenue streams, um, we work on two models. We've been around and operate, and we, our first sale was made at the end of September last year. We've been operating for a year now and focusing purely on online and direct to consumer. We have a subscription model as well as a one-off box model for parents to be able to try our products. Um, you can choose between one, two or three meals a day and um, depending on how many, um, ha and, and we take you through each stage um, as your baby progresses in age. Our future focus is in retail um, and getting, we're already in talks with some major retailers um, we have letters of interest and we're excited to go on that journey. Um, our proof of concept up till April, we've had a great, we've sold 2000 meals up till April and many thousands more. In the last three months, we've increased our growth by another 100% in terms of revenue, monthly revenues. We have a great percentage of um, monthly customers that come from repeat orders and, uh, and, and subscription orders. We have made quite an impact on the parents that we serve. We have a lot of um, great reviews online. We have a lovely report with our customers. Customer service is something that was on the forefront of what we want to bring um, to, to, um, with, our, with our project. And um, it continues to grow and we continue to see a lot of happy babies. The journey has been quite a, uh, you know, a, a, a good and, um, a journey that's taken us through many different stages um, from idea to testing. We use this new innovative food technology, so it needed a lot of testing. That was about a year of our time. Um, and like I said, September of 2020, we made our first sales. We actually manufacture everything in-house, but for the future and for retail, we've already put a plan together to manufacture offsite so that we can decrease our costs and reach a much wider market. Um, we had also, we're planning to go into um, toddler meals and snack foods to extend the lifetime value of our customers. The baby food market in the UK um, is a 285 million serviceable market between prepared baby foods and baby finger foods market, which we're after. It's um, baby food, prepared food is actually declining. 
And the reason for that is um, parents just do not have a trust anymore in, um, in, 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 in the larger brands. They know that it's, it's, they, they know that there's, um, there's the lack of nutrition there. And a lot of the problems that I referenced earlier are contributing to that. Um, we've done a lot of research this last year. We understand who our target market is. Um, we understand how to communicate with that target market. And we need um, more money from our investors to service that growth. And uh, our exit strategy will be you know, to one of these um, large companies. That is the aim. And this is our team so far. It's myself, my lovely son, who's been um, fortunately getting to taste everything from, from concept up to this point. And uh, thank you for taking the time to hear this presentation. And if you'd like any further information, please do get in touch. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, very rushed. <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be. Okay. It should be maximum five minutes. Okay. I'm not talking to you directly. I'm talking to everybody. Sure. Let's say punchy. Um, one thing I'd say is uh, how much are you raising? what for oh my gosh i actually removed that slide by accident before right. I got into you guys I'll, 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 let, I'll let you into a little secret here we'll, we'll come yeah. back to what we're talking about pitch decks and stuff when when they're sent out to various investors um and i'm not alone in this maybe i'm not the only one certain companies people and it sounds crazy if they're red they'll throw it in the bin if they're blue they'll look at it they'll look at okay. the first slide that says basically bang this is what we're doing and they'll look at the bottom side saying how much you're raising and what for okay right and they'll they won't even look to start with in anything in between and if on the first slide i haven't read or these guys haven't read and understood within a sentence or two or a slide as we say what you're up to and shot down well first of all if it's 30 pages long we talk about this in a workshop but let's just say it's a short slide deck five six pages maybe eight max you hit the bottom one, which is why Anthony on the last um, uh, practice uh, one just said, "Take me to the bottom slide. Let's see what it see what it says." And the mentality is because so many people get so many pitch takes and everything else is like, "Bang first slide, bang bottom slide." Then they'll look at the rest if they're interested. Anthony, please um, your comments. Yeah, so thank you. And I think that's exactly it. In fact, one of my colleagues at Seed Legals who heads up investor partnerships is doing some research on how long investors look at slide decks. Uh, I think he's seen the medium is five minutes, but I was uh, suggesting to him it's either 15 seconds or like half an hour, depending on whether they're in or they're out. And you really do form a view immediately. So uh, Salah, that was an awesome uh, set of branding pitch deck and, and pitch. You, you've nailed it on the branding. The thing that was conspicuously missing is, dude, how much do you want to raise? And you have SEIS. You also mentioned you need more money, which means you have raised already. So tell me very quickly, how much have you raised and how much are you looking to raise? Sure. I mean, we're, we're in talks of raising, so it hasn't been raised, but uh, around 100,000. And for the total round, we'd like um, 385,000. Okay. All right. So I, I think you've ticked all the boxes of, uh, a, a very nicely defined product with pictures sure. of the product so it exists. Yeah. Um, you've, you've got some traction. You've obviously the target market. I love, you know, obviously bringing the kid into it as well. Um, I, I think why, a couple of other boxes you might want to tick are the safety aspect because if it's cold pressed and so on, I mean, for adults, that's fine, but I've no idea what the laws are or whatever or sure. the longevity. So you might want to have something about food safety in it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, you know, it's, it's, made on, it's made by you guys at home, but very quickly that's not going to work. So I don't know what you've looked at in terms of supply chain logistics, you know, dark kitchens and all the rest. You might have that totally under control or you might need huge amounts of CapEx to set that up. Uh, you might want to look at Karma Kitchen, by the way, that does these virtual... Uh, We've set up our manufacturing site. I, maybe I didn't make that clear, but we're moving away and using... And, and, and off-site manufacturer so we can focus okay. more on ourselves. All right, so, so I would put a bit more effort in that. Sure. I think, you know, we, you started off with, uh, you know, the, the perfect pitch about 
the beautiful branding, the the vegetables and so on. I think it sort of tailed off in the passion and so on. It looked a bit like I've got these slides to get through a bit later on. You also had a little bit of background noise happening um, and a couple of internet freezes that just detracted. So the reason I'm mentioning this is to really, you know, the different levels of pitching and you're ready to get to the guru level. So what you might want to do is look at some of the Y Combinator or uh, talks and so on. And what they do is they've sort of mastered the 101 on uh, I've got a product and I want X. The next Zen level is we're on a mission to change the world. There are a billion babies, 100 million babies born a year, um, and uh, and they're all starting off the wrong way. And in terms of you know customers with lifetime value, well, if you get them when they're zero, you've yeah. got them like the Coca-Cola company yeah. for life. <laughs> so you know after year three, we're going to be bringing out crisps and and then uh, a set of alcoholic beverages when they get to 18. But we've got a long time ahead of us. Um, anyway. So, so really nice pitch, and, and obviously, as as Neil said, the, the missing piece was the uh, the yeah. how much you, you're looking to raise. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, Thanks. and by and by the way, you've got a typo in your uh, revenue that. stream slide. You've got and and, which the astute eye picks up. Okay, I did see that just before we. I was rushing in because we had production yeah. last week and my stuff. But thank you. It's really invaluable to do this, and I really right. appreciate all your comments. All right, you're, good. So thank you're more than welcome to say that this is what we're here to do. Uh, and thank you. I think and I hope that people, you know, appreciate, uh, uh, you know, our time, Anthony's time and, and such like for these events, because it, it's absolutely uh, invaluable, really. Um, and again, you're welcome to come to other ones, say, get into the club. You won't have to pay. Um, so, right. Um, I've got a couple of others, but I, I'm not sure they're in here. So I'm going to go to Samina. And I think and unless somebody puts something in the chat and says, I've paid and I'm pitching, then Samina will be our finale for today. Wow. What a lead up. So, All right. <laughs> so and by the way, Samina's just joined the club. So welcome to the club. Um, it's great to have you on board. And Thanks as I say, me. we're here to help. More, you're more than welcome. Right now, you've let me see. Can everyone see this? Hang on a second. Mm. It's taking its time. We're seeing a black screen there. Samina. Oh gosh, it's doing something weird. That's okay. Is that better? No. No, um, still no. Not at the moment. You, you're probably oh. in uh, full screen. You know what? Mode, I'm not going to. to um, it's okay. We look. Look. Oh, wait, we, whole... we, we we see a little oh, blue. I'm... The slight First blue circle. I'm just taking it off the other screen. Is that better? Uh, no. Hang on. No, you've gone off now. Um, I've got me on the screen. Give it a second. All right. So, Samina, you, you're screen sharing something, but I think it's a second monitor or whatever. So, have you I've gone full screen in your presentation or just read mode? I'm on full screen, um, but it's doing okay. something funny now. All right. Now we can see a slight blue thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. This is no, like. No, no, we've got it. We've got it. We're here. Don't touch <laughs> anything else. We're good to go. All We're right. Is, Away you go. Now. It's oh, no. Yeah, we, we're back. Okay, we're yeah. good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna press on. So can Please. you see? Oh God, it keeps going off. I don't know why. It's never happened before. Okay. Um, I might take it off full screen because I think that might be the issue. We've got you back now. Okay. Yeah. Keep. Don't keep press going, anything go. else. <laughs> Can you see the screen? We can. Yeah, we got Mondes uh, London and the oh, okay. picture. Okay. Um, but I can't see it. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. take, take it off full screen and see what happens. Okay. I'm so sorry. 
It's all right, yeah. relax. This is the whole idea of doing these things. Yeah, I guess you get, so, you get yeah. to practice on us instead of seed camp. So there you go. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start again. I'm so sorry. I'll try and cut this, you know, try and stick to the time. Um, and that picture of dessert is reminding me of lunch. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, your, your, time, your timing I've got, got more I've got important the worst, here. I've got the worst okay. timing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Going back onto, I think it might be just. Uh, I tell you what. Mm. Obviously, if it's going to be a problem, here's one. Have a chat about what you're doing. Without any, you've got. If you can see your decks. Um, and it'll be an interesting it experience. Now. Yep. Okay. I think I'm. I managed to get it back on screen. So. Um, Hold on. There you go. It's not on full screen at the moment. Sorry about that. Can you see that? No, it's still black. Still black? Yeah. Okay. I'll have a chat then. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. So um, I'm Samina. I'm the founder or co founder of um, Mon Dessert. Um, we're a dessert making kit company. Um, and uh, the, the sole purpose of, of the company is to, um, to bring joy to people's lives through desserts. Um, and uh, we have, oh God, sorry. It's all going horribly wrong. So my screen just goes, keeps going blank, I'm not sure why. It, it might be worth uh, popping back next time, Samina, to do yeah. the, uh, the pitch. So, so, by the way, the, the, the elevator pitch is also a really good one to practice because you never know when somebody will come along yeah, and ask you. And my definitely most unusual elevator pitch was about 2 a.m. in Amsterdam in the <laughs> sex district after IBC, which is a huge broadcast conference <laughs> where the people had gone for a walk to a bar and someone from Cisco in the venture capital Capital team said, pitch your business. And I went, well, everything you've read about pitching is definitely being challenged right here. So, oh, so, so, you know. I can't think everything that went wrong could go wrong, did go wrong there. Do you, do you, do you um, want to try the, the one minute pitch, the elevator pitch for okay. what, what the company is without slides and sure. just take that for now and then we'll come back next time. And, uh, okay. and if you want to practice with me personally on a Zoom call quickly, uh, some other time to see how to do the screen sharing and so on, or you know, with with a friend. Oh, that, that's then, a then great we'll, offer. We'll get that uh, oh, wow. right. Amazing okay, offer. so so go for it for Thank the sixty you. second elevator okay, pitch. Okay. What are you doing? So, so yeah. Monster is a dessert making kit company with the sole purpose of bringing joy to people's lives through dessert making kits. And it's desserts that's the key differentiating point. So it's not baking kits. We're there to really stretch people's skills, to really get them out of their comfort zone, making things that they've probably never made before. Like on the first slide that you just saw was uh, Baked Alaska. So included in the kits, you'll often get um, tools of the trade, like a blowtorch, um, specialist moles, specialist equipment that you would never thought that you would could have at home in your own in your own kitchen tool box. So that would be the key differentiating point. Um, we, uh, business model wise, we've got uh, two revenue streams. So retailers, we've recently, I'm very pleased to announce, uh, uh, actually signed up with Ocado. We're launching in November. And uh, we're in quite deep talks with another national supermarket uh, currently, and which we're hoping to launch in January, but uh, I don't want to say more at this point. Um, otherwise, D2C model is going quite strong. We've got a strong subscription model with a repeat customer rate of 30%. And uh, we also send, sell standalone products as well, gifting through to um, kitchenware, through to refill kits. So we've got a good repeat customer rate. Um, yeah, so we're, we're hoping to make a raise uh, 700,000 um, and we're already doing the application for SCIS, EIS. Um, and uh, yeah, that, uh, that's, that's it. So if you have any questions, uh, please, please do get in contact. <laughs> All right. So thank you. So take, take, 
too on the, the, the <laughs> elevator pitch was good. I think the key thing, by the way, to me is not so much the dessert, but the kit. And uh, it's, uh, you know, so, so on your pitch, I would focus on why people want it, what the market opportunity is, and then just at the end, talk about the traction, uh, you, because you have really need to establish in the person's uh, mind, oh, this is amazing. It's exactly what I want. I yeah. keep wanting to do bake it last. I don't have this <laughs> blowtorch and the, yeah. the other things. It's too much trouble if someone just shipped the whole thing. And for the family, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. Uh, you know, the, the food kits are kind of nice, but it's just easier to order delivery with the dessert. I'm going to have some fun as well. Yeah. So tease out yeah. why people want it and why everyone's going to want it. And then I think the last thing is you mentioned 700K. So 700K is like a seed round. It's, it's quite chunky. And yeah. usually companies will sell a median of 15% equity. So you're going to multiply the amount that you want to raise by five to get the valuation. So my, you know, if, if you were to be, you know, market standard, that would mean your pre-money valuation was going to be about three and a half million pounds. What did you have in mind, by the way, for your valuation? Um, uh, I don't know. We're, I'm actually with Seed Legals currently, so we're working through the term sheet. Um, okay. Yes. So it's, it, yeah, um, I think anywhere between around three million upwards. That would okay. Be All right. So I didn't uh, guess too badly. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the thing is, obviously, you need to know the answer, at, at least as a discussable point with the investors. Yeah. But also sure. when, it, when you are raising at a three mil valuation, investors are normally going to be looking for uh revenue you know monthly uh revenue of you know 10 20k or, or 30k or more so you're going to have to work harder than someone looking for 150k the 150k is i'm looking to launch it and the 700k is i've got uh, metrics i've got traction and i'm now looking to scale and you know outsource it from from home to a logistics center and so on so mm -hmm. so on when when you do the pitch I, I would be looking to see you're justifying that part to it more than others on the pitches today which is because you're not just angel round this is more seed round territory so would this uh, over 500 would be over Overseed, would you say? I, I, well, I, I think, you know, if you very quickly and then, then I need to run, which is the, the startup sort of journey is you have an idea, you put mm -hmm. uh, our data shows a median of 20,000 pounds of your own money into it because people aren't going to invest on a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And then you might do 50K friends and family from people you know, you know, mm -hmm. just on the dream, they know you. And then you might raise 150,000 angel uh, investment to get you to launch. And then, sorry about the, uh, the police noise in the background. <laughs> and, and then you might raise, I live on the banks of the Thames and it's a rare police boat coming by. Wow. Um, so, and, and, and then you might raise uh, a seed round of, of 500 or 700,000 pounds generally post-launch to get to scale and get revenue. And once you've got revenue, then you may raise a few million pounds uh, from VCs and that money. So, so if you're looking at use of funds, number one, it's to build something. Number two is to build mm -hmm. the team to start mm -hmm. scaling it. And once you've got revenue, then it's to start raising money to buy advertising, buy marketing, scale out get bus shelter ads, whatever it might be, because mm -hmm. you prove the model. And now the more money you throw at it, the more people across the country or internationally will see it. And, 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 and uh, you, you're fueling uh, sales marketing to get revenue for a known yes. model. I and, did, and, uh, and you I need did to fit that. A use of fun slide. <laughs> right. But, um, but, and uh, yes, the majority of what we want to raise would be going on marketing um and advertising okay all right well i'm looking forward to seeing the the presentation next time and if you want to send me directly your pitch deck i would be delighted to take a look at wow. it as well what an offer thank you thank all you right much. so so slightly uh, off off plan but but you got to do the <laughs> right. elevator pitch so that one day on a dark night somebody who hits you up with the better uh, the, the, the elevator pitch you, you you know exactly what it is okay cool Thank you. That's great, Thank everybody. Anthony, sorry. Uh, sorry.
Thank you very much. Um, again, thanks to Rupert from Foresters for attending. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of companies here that are going to benefit from some sort of trademarks and IPs and what they're doing. Um, so again, please have a look at our club, the Exponential uh, dot Club is the website. Um, Anthony and myself, um, Dan Ballin, who can help you with pitching and also capital introductions, who unfortunately couldn't make today because he's having a little holiday, which is fine. Um, our next workshop, um, is, which is basically called, you know, Startups, How to Raise Capital for Your Company, is on the 6th of October. If you go onto our website, you can book tickets on there. And we look forward to seeing you for that. And also then for our next uh, pitch and also our virtual pitch events that, that we're holding. So please, oh, by the way, we've recorded this. What we'll do is we'll put it on our YouTube channel um, so you can have a look. It's not a massive channel. It's designed basically for people we know and everybody else to look at. So you can see how you come over, um, where you appear on the screen and everything else, whether your head's down here or perhaps up there. Um, and, and look at uh, ideas of presentations, as, as Anthony says, I've always got this old German clock behind me in the door, but, uh, <laughs> and Anthony's always got some nice flowers and TV screen with a speaker, <laughs> which is fantastic. So, um, uh, anybody got any further questions they want to ask or, because uh, otherwise, as I say, I think with a dessert thing, Anthony's hungry. Thank All you right. again, Neil and Anthony. Great session. I have Thank, to go. Thanks, Ian. Uh, and thanks, uh, uh, Alice and uh, Salah and uh, Samina, uh, and and Michael, of course, as well. So some some great presentations. All right, and anything I can help with, and and I guess uh, on uh, Dan's side as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Anthony, thanks very much, Dave. We'll catch up soon. Yeah. So bye. Bye bye. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good day. It's supposed to be hot, so go and enjoy it.